Equitable distribution in Florida is the distribution of the marital assets that have been acquired during the marriage. What the courts generally do and what the statute requires is that the presumption is that you start with a 50-50 split. They're gonna first identify all of the assets and the liabilities of the marriage, generally using the date of filing of the divorce as a date to start with. They're gonna identify the assets, determine the values, and then equally distribute the assets to the parties. Now that doesn't mean that there's a split of every asset down the middle. What it means is the husband gets X and it's valued at whatever figure, now the wife is entitled to 50% of that value. So that may come from another asset. At the end of the day, it's simply what I like to refer to and what it is, a balance sheet. Each party should walk away with 50% of the value of the marital estate. That is called equitable distribution. Many people have a misconception when it comes to the distribution of assets during a marriage or when you finalize your case. The presumption is, which means that the courts are required to give the parties a 50-50 split. And there's really no wiggle room around that. So if you go to trial and the court is deciding the issues of your case, you can rest assured you're gonna walk away with 50% of the value of the estate. Now, when it comes to settling a case, you can do whatever you want when it comes to equitable distribution. And that's the beauty of settlement agreements because sometimes it makes more sense for one party to get a little more of one asset because of some other issue in the case, such as maybe child support or something of another nature. So the flexibility in settlement agreements really looks at that and gives you so many more possibilities. But if you go to court and you can't resolve your issues, know that you're gonna walk away with 50% of the value of the estate. Marital assets in a divorce basically involve all the assets that have been received during the marriage. However, as we know, sometimes you receive an asset during the marriage and maybe you sell that asset and now you use the money to do something else and so it's no longer available. But what they're looking at is the date of filing as to what is in place at that time. Now, in Florida, title does not control. So whether the asset is in your name the spouse's name or both names is really irrelevant. It could even be in the name of a business. Everything is part of the marital estate, what I like to call the marital pot subject to distribution. It all goes into the pot and at the end of the day, we're looking to have a 50-50 split of the value. In Florida, there could be some limitations as to the division of property. For example, if you have children and you have a marital home, the marital home itself is considered a marital asset, but there might be some restrictions on when the property is actually sold and divided. They might wait until the youngest child reaches majority or graduates from high school. So I generally, the understanding is that all of the marital assets will be subject to a 50-50 distribution. There can be some restrictions, at least for a period of time, as to when the dollars are actually distributed. Practicing marital and family law since 1994, I've dealt with a lot of property division. And generally in, I would say, at least 99% of the cases, there's gonna be some distribution of assets. Now, the real issue isn't identifying the assets. The real issue is the valuation of the assets. That's where the issues arrive. So let's say we have a husband who owns a business and that business interest is a marital asset. The issue might be about the value. So most people don't argue about the identity of the asset, they mostly argue about the value of the asset itself. What's different at Yaffa Family Law Group compared to other family law firms is that we really look at different types of representation available to the client specifically. Some firms only, for example, litigate. We also do collaborative law, we do mediation, we do limited representation and consulting. So at Yaffa Family Law Group, we don't have what they call a minimum retainer amount. What we do is we figure out what representation is best for you. We are what they consider a smaller firm, and uh, we usually have team members of about 10, generally anywhere from five to seven attorneys, depending on our caseload. 
What's unique about that is that we all know, meaning our entire team knows your case. You're not just dealing with one-on-one, -on -one, one lawyer, one paralegal. You can contact us and most any team member can pick up the phone or get back to you and they're gonna understand the issues unique to your case. During the initial consultation, one of the major issues that we discuss is the distribution of the assets. Now, we will discuss at that time the identity of marital assets and what that looks like. What are the assets subject to distribution in your case? We'll also identify what they call non-marital assets. For example, if you received an inheritance from your aunt and you placed it in a separate account during your marriage, and we can show this, we can identify this, that asset should be taken off the top as considered a non-marital asset. So we're gonna go through all of those different types of assets, what they look like, what assets you have, and how we're gonna distribute them. What that might look like. If you want a particular asset, do we have a chance getting that? So we're gonna take our time, we're gonna identify assets, we're gonna get through what it looks like, we're gonna talk about valuation, and at the end of the day, we're gonna have a game plan moving forward.